Hey everybody, this is uh, Spencer Michaud um, coming to you with my first uh, live face broadcast. Hopefully, you can hear me. Um, if you're floating around out there and you can uh, give me some feedback, if you can hear what I'm saying, that'd be awesome. Um, anyway, I just got back, back from UAC 2018. Uh, uh, thanks to a very generous scholarship from uh, AFAN, which is the uh, Association for Astrological Networking. Um, really amazing uh, organization that really helps uh, people like myself to uh, a conference like UAC, which can be quite, quite pricey. Um, to get my good speaking crystal. This is a kyanite. Also the throat chakra here. Um, yeah, so I had a nice uh, scholarship from AFAN, which um, basically got me there and got me in the door with a, a pre and post conference workshop. And you can see here I had my nice little badge in Michigan, full conference. I didn't fill in the little sun, moon, ascendant thing. Uh, <clears throat> keep them guessing right now I also will say with this live video that I'm running on about an average of four or five hours of sleep for the last week um, the experience at UAC was amazing one of the things that you don't get enough of is sleep so <clears throat> if I'm uh, fading in and out here we'll we'll blame it on that um, yeah a couple thoughts though I had a lot of thoughts about the conference uh, really amazing week I was the uh, beneficiary of a nice grand water trine uh, that my son was completing and my Mercury was completing with Jupiter and Neptune and Scorpio and, and Pisces. So I was the, uh, the Cancerian uh, part of that. Uh, and uh, I think I definitely uh, was the beneficiary of that energy. Um, my experience was quite magical. Um, quite watery and found myself uh, very much in the right place at the right time. Um, made uh, more friends than I can count on fingers and toes and, uh, and I think that they're going to be friends in a community that's going to sustain uh, my practice for a long time. Uh, I think that uh, that's probably the most important thing that I brought back from UAC 2018 was getting getting to speak a shared language with, with a, a community of people. Uh, as astrologers, we often get pretty isolated in our own little worlds, and we don't get to always discuss uh, the details of our, of our charts and of the world and, and speak the lingo, so to speak. And we always have to kind of sit down a little bit to catch people up to speed or talk about that. And we always, you know, we kind of, kind of we also have to, you know, kind of pick our spots too, because not everybody is receptive. But being at a place like this was, was, you know, you had the most brightest astrological minds in the world, just all around you. And it's like one, you go from one person to the next, and each have something unique and, and, and beautiful to offer. So that was really special. Um, I think that uh, it's really important to get face to face with people in these these types of things. Um, I've been starting to establish uh, relationships with astrologers online, uh, and that does help because the, you are starting to get your face uh, out there, and, and people will start to recognize your voice and whatnot. But you really can't replace that face to face uh, interaction with people. Uh, we're really missing that in the, our current. I don't know airy age right we've uh, uploaded all of our consciousness to um a the cloud and the the internet and we really miss that interaction that you can have between people that is the real human connection and you know things like body language and things are really important to me uh i, I really pick up on nonverbal cues and whatnot and there's there's kind of a an exchange that you can only get from looking someone right in the eye and just being with them in their presence uh, that, that goes for your peers and for your, your teachers and whatnot. So uh, I really highly recommend if you are thinking of going to a conference like this in the future, 
that you you take the opportunity. Um, it's expensive. Uh, there was a lot of uh, costs in there that I didn't anticipate too, but at the end of the day, it, it's worth it. Um, I started out my conference experience driving. Uh, I, I happened to be lucky enough to live within four hours of the conference and uh, just drove there. And I, my, my mom actually lives in a suburb that's about 40 minutes west of Chicago. So I had my room and board basically taken care of and that was, that was very helpful. Um, one of the challenges was commuting back and forth um, to, the, to the conference. Uh, I started out taking the, the Metro train in, which um, was good, but, it, but it, it put me on a schedule. It put me like always watching the clock and the train always only runs about once every hour uh, at some points. And then on the weekends, it only runs once every two hours. So uh, one of the things that you'll experience when you're at a conference like this is you don't want to leave. Uh, you're, you know, the hotel lobby is a, a hub of activity and whatnot. And when you are within that sphere, um, you're going to be having these deep conversations with people and you, you try to <laughs> you try to extricate yourself from one of them and you just run right into another brilliant mind that you want to connect with. So I, I think it's important. Um, one of the things that was advice from uh, Chris Brennan on his podcast and, and the folks from uh, AFAN, including uh, I think our Ryan Butler was stay in the hotel. And in my experience, I think that actually is a, a really good advice. Um, if I had to do it all over again, I, I, I think I might have tried to find the funds to, to stay in the hotel and, and not have to be watching the clock all the time. Um, but you know what? You, you're going to have learning experiences, and, and the way that you learn how to do these things is just by taking the leap and, and jumping into the fire. And um, my, my experience was pretty incredible. Uh, first day that I arrived, um, sitting in on a roundtable discussion, uh, for the AFAN organization about how to organize a local astrology group. Um, I've been doing classes and consults in my local area, but I'd like to start a group, more of a social group here as well. Um, we do have an NCGR chapter in, in Detroit, um, but we're, you know, I think it'd be nice to start a, a group that's maybe more local to Ann Arbor and, uh, you know, give some opportunities for, for some younger astrologers to have their voice be heard and whatnot as well. And maybe we can work together with the, the, the old order, so to speak, as well. Um, one of the things that I was really focusing on this week was being a bridge builder. Uh, it's, I think it's really important uh, in the astrological community to make sure that you are reaching out to people, even if you have a difference of opinion. Um, we tend to be really isolated in our, in our, uh, the way that we, you know, do our studies and whatnot, and we all become sort of a little bit of an expert in our in our respective fields. And one thing that that can engender is a little bit of a, it can be an ego thing too. There's there's definitely some some ego involved every once in a while because we do get put on a pedestal every once in a while with some of this knowledge, and and we get boosted up and whatnot. Um, and we have to realize that you know st we have to stay humble. We have to make sure that we're uh, considering what we're doing service orientated and stay stay on that mindset and also realizing that at the end of the day we're all astrologers and we already are fighting the uh, the battle of respectability with with the greater common you know society and if we can bridge you know make bridges between one another that's going to be really powerful for bringing whatever the message is we have to the masses. And I don't think that that means that we can't disagree with one another. But I think what it does mean is that we have to uh, disagree in a respectful manner. And uh, every once in a while, just say, we agree to disagree. Because <laughs> you're, you're not going to solve everything in one thing. I think that um, the other thing I noticed with this conference is that, you know, this group of a, the, this larger, this astrological community is, we're just human beings too. And some of the things that we experience are just basic group dynamics and basic uh, relationship skills that can help to facilitate those things. Uh, I think that the, one of the really beneficial things is you know, sharing a meal with somebody and getting, getting to know them on a personal level too. So that when you do come to those, those uh, crossroads, you're gonna have some common ground to, to work through. 
and you're going to have some shared experiences that are going to pull you through some of the stickier parts of your your experience and uh, you know and I will, I will say this too there's no replacement for the power of kindness and the power of generosity and the, the power of uh, validation uh, one of the the approaches I took to this conference was I tried to validate everybody that I ran into because you know I think that they don't receive enough of that in their the greater society and uh, people need to know that that they are worthy of uh, respect and that what they're doing is important and I think that uh, people are going to respond a lot better if you're nicer you know um, and don't be afraid to walk up to your your heroes I think that at the end of the day these are just folks these are just people and yes they have uh, some amazing knowledge and and some of them are very high vibrational people who have, have gone through a lot in their lives um, but you know they still they still have to eat sleep and you know need love and respect and all those things and if you can bring that to the conversation instead of lionizing people you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get far um, that being said, I was a little starstruck this week. Uh, in addition to like the first day I, I went in there, I was doing a round table with AFAN and you know, Chris Brennan from the Astrology Podcast comes in and I'm just like, oh, I couldn't even help myself. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a little starstruck now because I've been uh, binge listening his podcast for uh, the last year. And, and really that's the reason I, I made it to UAC. I learned about UAC and about uh, scholarship opportunities and, and kind of how to make that happen. And so I, I'm really grateful to, to him for uh, helping me on my journey and, and getting getting there. And he was very gracious. Uh, he's a, a very um, humble and down to earth dude and uh, very welcoming. You can tell that he's absolutely a people person. Um, he, he will always give someone space to have their own opinion. And I really respect that, even if he doesn't agree with it. And, and that's really important. You need to give people space to have their own their own thoughts and feelings, and then instead of just waiting for your own your own time to speak and your own thing to share. Um, after that, sat in on a discussion panel uh, on is is astrology killing or is prediction killing astrology? <laughs> a provocative title to say the least. Uh, and that that had uh, Stephen Forrest, Chris Brennan, Samuel Reynolds, Chris McRae, uh, Rick Levine. Um, and then another wonderful lady from England, uh, um, I think a financial astrologer whose name that escapes me, and so I apologize. Um, and, and, you know, pretty interesting discussion. Um, a lot of things were said that I think needed to be said, and for the most part, everybody was, was respectful to one another. Um, but that was day, day one. Like, I think that was, the, that was before the conference even started. Uh, so, um, and I had the opportunity to go out to dinner with... Uh, Chris and Lisa Scheim and, and Sam and, and get to kind of get to know them a little bit better. And that was a really nice experience. Um, day two for me was a, a Rob Hand workshop. Uh, I did, let's see, what do I have here? There you go. Rob Hand, pre-conference workshop. Uh, he was working with difficult chart placements, which was a really interesting lecture. He was talking a little bit about uh, the philosophical things behind fate and free will and whatnot. And, uh, he asked for some volunteers from the audience and actually chose me to do, do read my chart in front of the class, which was, uh, how lucky am I, right? I get to, you know, my first day there and Rob Hands got my chart up on the screen and giving me, give me life advice, you know, and, um, really feel blessed about that. And, um, we talked a little bit about my own personal transition to from being a musician to uh, hopefully a career in professional astrology i'm already kind of doing that but uh, it seems like he sort of gave me his blessing which was uh felt really good and validating um and yeah and and just balance between career and home life and whatnot uh that's something that that i struggle with a little bit personally you know being a cancerian family is really important to me and i uh i uh really do take that that role as a as a father really seriously and um you know but it's it's a balance you know you kind of there's going to be different times in your life where one thing is going to take precedence and that you're going to have to put your energy and your focus a little bit more towards one rather than the other but at the end of the day you've got to make sure that you have balance in your life um so that was day two 
<laughs> and right after that, I, I ran into Chris and he's like, hey, can I, uh, you know, interview you for this video blog that I'm doing from the conference. So uh, Chris was kind enough to get my, my, my mug out there in front of everybody and uh, give me a platform to, to share some of my thoughts of the first day. And that was uh, really a, a, a wonderful thing. Um, so grateful for that. Uh, met a lot of really great people. Um, I think that's the thing I'm going to take take away from this. Uh, I have a uh, a crew from San Diego now that are some of my favorite people. Uh, uh, a nice woman named Shannon Aganza kind of took me under her wing uh, this week and um, was kind of my UAC mom, showing me the ropes. She was a she's a veteran and uh, a wonderful, wonderful spirit. And I, I'm just very grateful to her. Hi, Shannon, if you're you're watching this at some point. Um, yeah, and, and getting to, just getting to know people. Uh, Adam Ellenboss, one of my, the people I'm gonna be uh, apprenticing with coming up on June 10th. Uh, you can sign up at Nightlight Astrology, I'll give him a plug, right? Uh, he, uh, he went out to eat with him and, and broke some bread and got to meet him in person. I think that's really important. That's an important part of going to a conference too. If you have a teacher that you wanna work with, getting to know them in person is uh, very valuable because you're going to see how you might interact with them. Uh, you can see how they are going to, I don't know, you can just get a, get a vibe. I think it, you'll have a, a it's, there's much more accountability and mutual respect when, you, when you've gotten to know these people a little bit. It's not just some face on the screen that's talking to you. Um, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, let's see, what else I got here? So who else did I meet? Fellow AFAN scholarship winners, uh, that was that very nice people. Uh, who we have there? Uh, my friend Megan, beautiful soul, uh, enjoyed sharing some some conference uh, lectures with her and discussing things. Um, my friend Heidi from San Diego. I'm telling you, there's something going on in San Diego. San Diego's got the that's where the hip kids are. Uh, someday I, I I hope to visit. Um, yeah, a couple other people. I met a really nice guy from, from China who was interviewing people. I think his name is Michael. Um, I'm sorry if I'm forgetting anybody. Uh, I know there was another young man that was, oh man, what was his name? I think he was from Vermont. So you from Vermont, you're cool too. I'll remember your name at some point and I apologize. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, the, like I said, friendships. Um, what else? What I'll say about the actual lecture experiences. Uh, it can be really overwhelming. Um, there's probably about 10 lectures every hour, every slot, you know, every two or three hour time slot. Uh, and you have to kind of pick between all these really amazing astrologers. And that, that, that was very difficult. There were a lot that I wanted to, to do that I missed out on. Um, but, you know, on the flip side, you can order the, the, uh, the recordings for this. If you miss one, you can order the recordings on their website. I think you got a discount if you did it right after the, the lecture um, or the during the thing, whatever. Uh, but really, uh, it's a lot of information coming to you all at once. You can see that I had a, you know, one of these nice legal pads, and some some folks gave us handouts. You know, these are all my jumbled notes here, and some folks didn't. I will say I really do appreciate when somebody makes a really nice handout. It makes it a lot easier to kind of uh, follow along. I'll say my award, my award, and I don't know, April, are you still here? My award for the best handout goes to April Elliot Kent for uh, How I Met My Mother, which is about lunar phases and relationships. And you can see she just gave us this beautiful, uh, you know, thing here with lots of graphics, very simple to follow along with. Um, so April, good job. You're my hero, and I'm really happy that we got to meet. Uh, so, yeah, it's really hard to absorb all of the information all at once. Uh, you kind of have to kind of pick your spots. Um, some of the astrology, astrologer lecturers were saying that you could email them for slides, and I, I really recommend that you do that if you missed out. There were a lot of people taking pictures of slides and stuff, but I think ultimately emailing the astrologer uh, will, will help you get the complete you know, the complete information. Um, highlights. What were some highlights of the lectures? Uh, I really enjoyed uh, Rick Levine's quantum flute. He did a little bit of flute before his uh, quantum, 
quantum theory in uh, in astrology. That was that was very entertaining. Um, who else? Uh, got to see Rick Tarnas talk about uh, epochs in history and Uranus and Pluto kind of transits, which is really interesting. Ben Dykes, uh, Ben Dykes was awesome. Demetra George was fantastic. Uh, she was talking about the good and bad diamond in the 11th and 12th house. Uh, I, I did a lot of traditional track lectures. Uh, I've been getting energized towards uh, traditional astrology in the last year. I got a, I was gifted a copy of Astrology in the Authentic Self, which is right here, uh, by Demetra. Uh, and that one really just changed a lot of my worldview on things. And you can see that you got it signed, which is pretty cool. I got a lot of cool book signings this week. Um, and I can show you that in a minute. But so, yeah, I got, got really energized with, with, with that book in particular and kind of led me down studying the traditional techniques. Um, one passion of mine is trying to figure out how we can learn the the techniques of the ancient world but translate it for the for the modern person so that they feel empowered and are able have able to have some tools to work through some of these things because i think that one of the processes that i went through when i first started studying uh, was a little bit of a, an existential crisis about that fate versus free will question and what the nature of, of fate really is and kind of learning that you know my life might fit into a little bit more of uh, limitations than I originally thought. Um, not to say that I don't have choices, but I think that what I'm finding through my study is that there's there's more of a, you know, there's a river that's taking you down the path of life, and you can either swim against the current or go with the flow. And I'm learning how to go with the flow of, of my life rather than paddle against it. Uh, so, you know, it'll take some time, though. And, and how do we communicate these ideas in a way that's not going to completely, you know, split somebody's psyche in half. If we're bringing up some, some challenging things, uh, how, do we, how do we counsel them, really? I mean, I do, I do really believe in the ethics involved with uh, being a, a clear channel and, and uh, counseling people in a way that is, is helpful. I mean, at the end of the day, what are we doing this for? Are we doing this to just prove how much we know, or are we doing it so to actually help people and bring them a little bit of peace of mind? All right, I think that's the key. Uh, Adam Allenbos likes to talk about objective distance, you know, and, and really being able to rise above your your life a little bit and kind of get to view it from a vantage point that's going to help you understand what you're going through. And that's very valuable. And you have a, a beginning to some of these cycles and also realizing that there is an end as well. And that can help you appreciate and stay in the moment instead of uh, regretting the past and fearing the future. Um, so... You know, I think there's a lot of work to be done in that regard. I think we have uh, one. The other thing I notice is that everyone has their own unique specialty in, in this astrological field. There are some people that are amazing scholars that are doing amazing scholarly work. Uh, they have a very rational, analytical mind, and we need those people. And there's other people that are very, very heart-centered who have you know counseling backgrounds or, or you know thinking from their you know feeling from their heart chakra and their heart center, and we need those people too. And they all play, we have people who are great at organ, organizing things and play organizational roles. We have bridge builders. Uh, there's a place for everyone. And we really do need to, to find the uh, unifying things between that. Um, no, 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 I'm trying to, still trying to figure out what exactly my role is, but uh, I really like the traditional techniques. And I think that there's a beautiful symmetry involved in traditional rulerships, uh, learning about the primary qualities, uh, learning about, you know, different different house systems that were used in the ancient world, which um, I've had kind of a, a real transition to whole sign houses, which I, I find very valuable. And if you don't use whole sign houses, that's okay. I'm sure that there's other applications for other house systems that are that, that all of you use that are they're valuable. Um, I, I'm taking the approach of I'm still a student. I, I don't have all the answers to this, and I want to share what I know. But while still keeping an open mind, I, I think that that's another thing that I would highly recommend if you're an astrology student, uh, keeping an open mind to new concepts. I really appreciate that about Rob Hand, uh, who you know a lot of people call the, the dean of astrology, right? Uh, he, he, he basically, you can tell that it's his, his thoughts and his philosophy has evolved over time and he, that he's willing to make changes when a new concept or technique comes up that 
that completely either changes what he had said before or a position that he'd held before. So I encourage all of you to really stay open to learning something new. And there's no shame in it. There's no shame. We're all doing the best that we can with the light that we've been given. And you can't possibly know everything all at once. Okay. Um, I had a nice experience with him where he signed one of my books here, Horoscope Symbols. And then he shook my hand and he's like, you know, I'll do my best Rob here. And he's like, you have now shaken the hand of hand, <laughs> so, which, was, which is amazing. Uh, I, I think that's going to be burned into my memory for a long time. Uh, yeah, just lots of stuff like that. I mean, Demetri George signed a book, like Austin Kopic. This was a, a neat experience. Austin uh, Kopic just released this new book on, uh, as a part of a compilation of essays on astrological magic. And this book was the first one that he had touched. Uh, and the first one that he had signed. So I thought that was pretty special. So I wrote number one in there. Um, pretty cool stuff. And, and uh, amazing scholars, all of these folks, and, and just really interesting human beings. Um, what else? What else would I have feedback for the, for the conference? It's hard to get sleep. Uh, it's hard to, to kind of, you kind of get used to it after a while. Like you, your body adjusts a little bit, but then there's a, an adjustment period after that, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling kind of the come down a little bit from the conference. The, the post-conference blues are, are, are real. And uh, I think that we have to find ways to keep the momentum of something like this going. I think it's, it's very important to reach out to your local community as well. Um, I think that we can stay connected online, but nothing replaces that human, that human connection. So I think that's, you know, Pretty good summary of my thoughts here. Chicago is beautiful. Uh, it's the city of my birth, so it's like returning back home. It was a little pilgrimage. Um, yeah, and I just want, I have some people I just want to thank. I want to thank everyone from AFAN, uh, especially Lisa Scheim, uh, Christy Hall, and Wayne Hall, and uh, Amanda Pierce was very helpful in helping me with my scholarship. Uh, of course, Chris Brennan, um, and I know I'm going to forget some people here. Uh, but Shannon Aganza was very helpful with me this week. Uh, my mom, like for putting me up for the week. Uh, my partner, uh, Tanya, was really helpful with helping me with some of the logistics. So she deserves some some credit too. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I really hope this is a springboard. You know that that, that experience is a springboard for uh, staying connected with the community, uh, being able to contribute in a way that is empowering for everyone involved. And I hope that I'll be able to do more of this stuff and that we'll, we'll go on this journey together. Um, that being said, I do have a little tiny plug here. I am gonna be starting a new local uh, class on June 18th. It's gonna be a kind of an astrology 101 class. It's gonna be eight weeks. It's gonna be a short, short introduction to um, traditional techniques. Uh, we're gonna start, we're gonna be going through, I think one of the, books that I'm using to design the course around is this right here on the heavenly spheres, which is uh, a really amazing uh, kind of workbook textbook for, for some of the traditional techniques and some of the philosophy behind it. Um, I taught this class before in the, in the winter and a second session that piggybacked off of that. Um, so, so keep your eye out for that. I'll, I'll put a link to that in uh, the thing here. And um, yeah, I'm going to be posting this on a new YouTube page that I have, which is going to be called Spencer Michaud Astrology. Uh, so if you want, subscribe to that. And I also have a mailing list that you can find on spencermichaud.com, M-I-C-H-A-U-D. So that's what I've got for today. Thank you to everyone. And uh, it's going to be quite a wild ride, I think. Um, and be good to each other. Take care.